Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 143. Joining me this week, one Kyle Bailey. It's me. And also joining me this week, he's here all the time. They keep telling him to vacate his apartment, but he's got squatters' rights. It's Ian Gibson. Where's the legal notice? I've told you, Tom. <laughs> I need the legal notice. He needs it, Tom. Uh, folks, we are here to talk about video games and all things video games, which means we chit-chat at the beginning here. Uh, Ian has filled out the little chit-chat section here. There's, uh, It's very vulgar reading through it right now. But, <laughs> I just saw um, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is awful. Uh, Ian, <laughs> could you please talk about your new pornographic item you've received? Yes, Very that's correct. It's time to dive into VR porn, folks. Uh, I got this week my little Oculus Quest 3. I know this is a podcast, but I figure better discussion if you guys can see it. Um, brand new Oculus Quest 3. Brief rundown on this. This is a new standalone device. Better display, better tracking, better pass through, better camera than the previous Oculus 2. Um, this is my first standalone VR device because I previously had a Rift S. Uh, let's go around the room. So, Will, I know you have you have some VR experience, right? Yes, I had a something. Vive, right? HTC yeah, Vive. Vive years ago, and I sold it on eBay for, like, more than I bought it for, which worked out. <laughs> Fucking crazy. And, Kyle, you've, you've got VR experience? Yeah, I, um, f I think the first, like consumer grade vr thing i ever did was actually the psvr at my friend jimmy's friend of the show and then also through jimmy he lent me so that i could play half-life alex an original oculus headset so i have that in the closet um i just never use it because it's a pain gotcha. to set up yeah that's the cv i think that's yep. what they call it yeah, yeah. It, it was it was pretty old when i used it and it's even older now so yeah so this is this is not quite necessarily let me put it this way. This is now this is the cutting tech in this is the cutting edge technology in standalone VR. Um, it is not necessarily better than uh, headsets you can buy to hook up to the PC, but that don't work standalone. The Apple Vision Pro is not out yet, but it's also not really a gaming device. It's they're marketing it more as like a a lifestyle office device. Um, and I believe the only like direct competition to it in a way is the Quest Pro. But there are things that this does better, like pass through than the Quest Pro. So it's weird. It's the same thing that happened when they did the um, the Oculus Rift S that I bought. And then they immediately came out with the Quest 2 and they just dropped the Rift S basically where they were like, hey, turns out the Quest 2 is much, much better. So we're just going to go with that going forward. I feel like they're about to do the same thing with the Quest Pro. But um, so this week, I want to talk about hardware, and then I'll talk about games later because I haven't played a whole lot of games. But I, I think the key thing is the shit's tiny. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to say that holding it in your hands, but mm. it's literally like two inches shorter than previous headsets. It's basically the size of like a, a, a chunky pair of ski goggles, basically, which is crazy. Um, how how heavy is it? Like you holding it like and like holding it. And then like when you wear it, do you feel that weight after a certain amount of time? So it's about a pound. Um, oh. oh, OK. You do. I think it's like 500 grams. So maybe a little bit more than a pound. Um, but um, you do feel it. It's not as bad as previous headsets because it's closer to your face. Mm. So it's it's not it doesn't have as much of like a cantilever or a leverage effect to pull your head down. I will say uh, the strap is pretty bad. So it's not so much that you feel it because it's heavy. You feel it because the strap is not very good. And and it's mm. literally just like a cloth strap with some um, like elastic elasticity to it and some Velcro. And even though I have it set now, it's still a lot of fiddling putting it on and off. Um, they do sell some upgraded like pro straps and there's some third party companies. So at some point soon I am going to upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of like weight and comfort, like the headset itself is pretty good. There is one thing which is kind of weird, which is. So you guys know this with with all VR headsets, there's a sweet spot in terms of like where if you put your eye in the right spot, then things are perfectly clear. But if you're slightly off, then things are blurry or out of focus. And that's both like side to side with the the interpupillary distance, the IPD, but also like up and down. And this one, for some weird reason, it feels like I have to set it up 
like a centimeter too high, like it's sitting on top of my cheekbones to get the sweet spot, which is a little high and it's weird, but I've gotten used to it. Um, but I, I think for me, the big thing is the display. There's two things that the display is doing. Number one, the resolution's much higher. So you're seeing you're not quite seeing pixels. Well, you, you are seeing pixels, but everything's clear, mm. um, especially text. And the other thing is, do you guys remember the screen door effect where you could basically see the grid of pixels? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, I don't want to step on my own dick here, but I, I don't think this has any screen door effect now that I think about it. Like when I look at it, it's just a screen like you can still see pixels, but you don't see the screen door grid between the pixels. And I believe it's because of the pancake lens they're doing. Mm -hmm. So basically, in terms of screen quality, it's fantastic. Um, it's still not quite like indistinguishable from reality, but putting on any other headset like the Rift S, etc. There's a noticeable downgrading quality. It's actually it's funny. Um, I've been playing a little bit of Vito VR and the problem I have now is the game is ugly <laughs> and <laughs> and on previous headsets, like I kind of knew the game was ugly. But like if you look in the distance, you would get the screen door effect plus like fuzziness from the screen. And so you couldn't really tell. But if, I was flying around a VTOL VR this morning and I was looking out and now everything's too fucking clear. So I look at the <laughs> ground and I'm like, those trees are ugly. That ground texture is ugly. And it's <laughs> it's nothing against the game. It's just like the display has now outclassed the graphics capability, like most of the graphics that these games have built for. Um, so so that's really cool. The pass through. So pass through is basically uh, for viewers. There's basically three cameras on the front of the device, and they are for not just tracking the the, the handsets, um, but also viewing the world. And this is kind of a pass through forward, as in when you put it on, it doesn't by default show you a virtual reality space. It shows you what's around you. And it's pretty good. I mean, it's in full color. There's a little bit of stuttering and a little bit of like artifacting with things up close. But like if I'm sitting at my desk and I have the headset on, I can look at my monitor and interact with it. Um, I have to squint a little bit to see the text, but like if I have to quick do something on my PC, there's modes they have where actually I did this this morning. I was typing on my computer while wearing the headset because I had to do something. And so I was looking at a virtual screen from my desktop, just monitoring just a, a duplicate of my monitor. And it was perfectly clear in VR. And then I could look down and see through the camera, the keyboard perfectly clear so that I could keep typing and stuff. And it's it's pretty cool. And there's lots of games that are using that. So that's pretty neat. Um, there's also hand tracking. Have you guys heard about kind of the hand tracking that Quest has done? No, mm -hmm. I, I, a little bit. Yeah. So basically for a lot of the UI and some games, you don't even need controllers. Like I was doing this yesterday, um, trying to set it up and doing like um, there's a there's an app on your phone that you can do to control a lot of stuff. So instead of necessarily having to put on the controller to install a game, you can just set it up from your phone. And so I was kind of hopping back and forth between it. And so I would just throw the headset on, put my hands up and boom, it sees my hand and I'm using that to interact with things. Uh, that being said, it's it's very finicky. Uh, mm. so, so basically the way it works is you hold your hand open and if you um, you see a little like dot cursor so you can kind of move it around and it's like almost like a virtual pointer, like laser pointer from your fingers. So you can hover over a button and then you uh, touch your thumb and index finger together to do it. But the problem is they haven't as far as I can tell, they haven't really done any algorithm for like smoothing. So you're like mm. trying to like keep your hand perfectly still and it's like the cursor's like moving around a little bit and then you're like beep boop. and then there's there's something weird about the click in terms of like it can I can tell by the cursor that it knows I have put my thumb and index finger together but some buttons just ignore that or you have to like click and hold so it's it's like the hand tracking works really well it is completely tracking my hand and fingers it just needs like some algorithmic smoothing and better UX on top of it. Gotcha. But it is really cool just to throw the fucking hands, the headset on and be like, I'm just going to use my hands real quick to do something. I don't need to find my controllers. Are there, are there any like sculpting games you can use your hands? Oh, yeah. With? 
Yeah. There's like ZBrush and stuff. I don't know that you can use your hands, but there's there's all sorts of 3D sculpting games. And there's some games that support the hands. Um, all the top level menus and system menus support it. So it's pretty it's pretty handy. Um, the controllers controllers are identical to the previous ones. I know there's VR people who are gonna be like, it's not identical. They changed the battery cover. They got rid of the rings around them. It's like it's the same buttons. It's the same shape. <laughs> they just like there used to be a plastic ring around the top that they got rid of. Um, but um, yeah, that's just that's just how it is. So overall, I think I think I am enjoying the hardware. The big question is, is it worth five hundred dollars? And I think if you have not done VR yet and you're curious and you're willing to spend five hundred dollars, this is actually if you're willing to buy a VR headset, period, this is the way you should go. You should not buy a Quest 2. That's completely outdated. You should not buy any of the fucking Vive indexes. You should not buy a big screen like that shit's way too expensive to be tethered to a PC when this thing lets you tether to a PC if you want to. Mm. Um but that being said, I was thinking about the PS5 experience. We talked about this previously. PS5, it's five hundred dollars basically. Um, there's not a lot of exclusives for it, but at least you get a console that fucking works, right? <laughs> like it's a console. It has a menu. People have problems with the menu, but the menu system like works, and you can use it, and you can play old games on it, etc. Problem I've been having with the Quest Three is the same problem I had with the Rift S. And the same problem people have had with the Quest 2, which is it's a little bit glitchy. You know, there's some times where um, once or twice now it's just gone to a black screen for like half a second. And it's like, OK, that's very jarring in VR. Um, the the hand tracking can be a, a little bit hitchy at times. Um, anything like Quest Link, which is basically where you connect to your computer, either wirelessly or with a wire. It's kind of hit and miss, honestly where it'll drop the connection or you'll be in the middle of the connection and it'll just freeze. I've had the the headset do a hard crash once. And again, I've only owned this uh, for 48 hours. So it's definitely one of those things where it's like you still have those problems with VR where the the hardware and just the flat out user experience is not perfectly polished. But that being said, there's a shitload of great VR games um, I'll talk more about those after I've had some more experience to play with them, but it's very impressive for the VR space. It's just when you look at it outside of the VR space, it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of hardware. You're still buying a little bit early in. But that being said, for me, it's still right on the cusp of if you're interested in VR and you want to buy VR, this is literally the only way to go. Every other headset is either more expensive and or less feature set and it's cool I'm, I'm excited to uh to experience it some more you guys got any any questions about it or anything uh, um i was gonna ask price but you already you said it was 500 which yeah you know that's not that's not cheap um obviously some of the features that you were talking about like the the sorry mochi's just being mochi um uh the the touch sort of selecting stuff i know that that's sort of a big deal with the Apple Vision Pro, which is yeah. exorbitantly more expensive. Um, but from all accounts, it seems like that stuff is pretty spot on as far as like the the implementation. So it's interesting to see like a a lower sort of price gate for something doing the same thing and just like, hey, they have yeah. to work on it a little bit more. And um, it's not I think um, yet, but. I think the big hardware difference that allows Apple to nail that, I mean, on top of just UX algorithm smoothing polish is the Apple Vision Pro does have eye tracking. So mm -hmm. from what I hear, you to move the cursor, you just look at something. So yeah. you look at the UI element and then you close your fingers. You don't have to necessarily point at it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's the one thing the Quest 3 doesn't have compared to the Quest Pro and the Apple Vision Pro is that it doesn't have eye tracking. Um, but like like just to, to hammer the point home, like the fucking Valve Index is what it's a thousand dollars, I believe, for the headset. It, I don't mm -hmm. even think that includes the controllers or the lighthouses. And that's tethered to a computer. You know, the Quest Pro is like fourteen hundred dollars and the screen's roughly the same. And I think you're just getting uh, the the eye tracking on top of it. The Apple Vision Pro is twenty five hundred dollars like it. Five hundred dollars is expensive. It's just compared to what you get for that yeah. amount compared to everything else in this space. It's still a pretty crazy deal. So it's yeah, so it's 500 for the 128 gig, mm -hmm. 
600 for the 512 gig. I did some Googling beforehand and people were like, yo, most VR games are two to 10 gigabytes and you're only installing if they're standalone on the headset. Anything off the PC, you don't have to install. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, then I don't need 512. You know, yeah. like 128 is fine. So, so it's are, not bad. Uh, no, this is a larger question. Are the price differences between a 128 hard drive that size and a 512 hard drive that size actually $100? No, definitely not. How how long do you because, think that stops being the excuse here. for Zero. the price difference? It will always be there because they're trying to pad their margins. <laughs> yeah, they're selling the true. shit at a loss. So if they can get you to pay 100 bucks for $20 more in hardware, fuck yeah, they'll take it. They'll definitely yeah. take that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, that sounds great. I, I'm excited that um, you have an Oculus Quest 3 as our resident uh, VR correspondent. Uh, and I'm interested to know if it starts to get better. Like, obviously, it just launched. Um, there'll be updates ahead. Like, so mm -hmm. if you can keep us updated, I'm putting it on you. I will. And, and I, I will <laughs> say that's one of the that's one of the great things about the Quest is when the Quest 2 launched, it did not have. I don't believe it had wireless linking to your PC to play PC VR games. I don't even think it had wired linking to play PC VR games. So there, it didn't have hand tracking either. So they. It's one of the few consoles that they are like constantly adding significant technical upgrades, like going from 90 hertz to 120 hertz, hand tracking, Quest Air Link, etc. And so the Quest 3 is at a pretty good starting point. If they deliver the same quality of upgrades over the life of this device, I'm going to be very happy. Awesome. Sounds great. Um, and I'm excited to get uh, the, the uh, gross... One you're gonna give me. I won't look at it. I under, just cleaned uh, it off under it, UV light. <laughs> it was dusty, but genuinely very clean. I probably used it for what thirty hours total. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited because it's been a while since I've tried VR, and to like, from what I had to even that is probably yeah. going to be a, a bit of a jump. But so. let's be honest, what are you really excited about? Two person Porn. VTOL VR. Oh, two person oh, VTOL VR. Sorry. Yeah. Game's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Very excited. Um, great. That's awesome. So uh, that's the chit chat section. In case people didn't know, that was not the talking about video game section. Um, so we're gonna move into the video game section now. Uh, I'm gonna go first because um, I was just blessed with more time to record. So you know, I'm gonna take my time here uh, and uh, speak for about an hour. Uh, Alan Wake remastered. I have finished that. Defeated it. Uh, it definitely. <laughs> First of all, game's still a banger. Uh, great game. I understand the story a lot better as an adult now and actually paying attention. And also way shorter than I remember it being. And um, the ending kind of fell a little flat. Like, and not flat, but it's just like I want to keep going. And there's DLCs and stuff, but uh, it like boots you out and then you have to load back into the DLC, which is really annoying. But overall, Alan Wake... Still a fantastic video game. I'm more excited for two uh, now that I'm like more caught up with everything. And also, uh, like I said last time, that remaster is like the definition of a remaster. They just up it, all that sort of stuff. They changed nothing else. Um, Barry is the best character in that game. Um, he's so good. Great and job. It just, it also has a fantastic, um, like, you're finding pages of the manuscript while you're playing the game and then you read them and it like clues you into things that are going to happen in the next couple levels. So you're like waiting for the moment to happen and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a really fun game. Uh, it, it would not survive if it came out today. I don't think, but I'm excited for all the things they can add from, from control and gotcha. to, to, to have it, to it have would it pretty good. It would get canceled. Yeah, it would get canceled. It was just too much. They took a side it's too much. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a question? Have you sure. played Quantum Break? No, I have not played Quantum Break. I want to. I think I want to, folks. Yeah. I think I want to. They um they have a love affair watch the... with FMV, and I love it. I was going to say, yeah, the, the corresponding TV show that they made for it. <laughs> yeah. It's not... <laughs> It's not corresponding. My understanding is they play an episode between missions. It's in oh, the game. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought like for some reason episodes. When I'm they okay talked about it, I thought I thought it was like, yeah, if like you want more detail, you can watch this five episode TV no. show. <laughs> That's no, I, I think it's also literally never got into it. So yeah. yeah, I think it's literally twenty two minute episodic cutscenes between the missions. And Nightmare. I'm kind of I'm like, let's do Hideo it. Hideo Kojima's let's drooling. Do it. <laughs> 
I think um, Lance Reddick is in it. Uh, oh, <laughs> rip. Uh, uh, but the even the FMV in this game. What he's dead? Why are you looking at me like Sorry, that? Sorry, you just said you just said rip like like rip a bong, bro. Oh <laughs> no, no, Lance I meant to say zip because I was unzipping. Um, yeah, that sucks. Uh, move on, move on, <laughs> move on, move on. Uh, and then uh, I played a little bit. I'm not going to get into this now because I don't want to this week. But I have come to terms in my life uh, through playing Napoleon Total War um, that I'm not good at strategy video games. Uh, and, and I don't know how to define it. But when you have video games where the things, like the cities and things you own have buildings you can build that are like plus 2% this minus five percent un unrest civil unrest blah, blah 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 i my brain simply cannot wrap its head around that ever in any video game and i've come to terms with that now and i want to know if there's a way for me to break through that because i even related that back to like pokemon like oh a pokemon speed and stats and stuff i think i'm just not a stats boy so i think that's why like even armored core why i don't want to like brute force through it because i just don't want to look at stats and understand what they mean um so well, wait, wait a minute wait a minute so you're playing the campaign which includes the zoomed out 4x yeah type of map so play. it's just like it's i just want to fight the battles so it's too much for me to do the 4x stuff well but i told you there's that option from the menu which is just playing the historical oh, battles no I, i'm 100 percent there with you i did so i've been reading napoleon's biography i've been watching videos and stuff so literally i chose the italian campaign i'm like i know the italian campaign i like literally did his moves i did one battle one battle i set up my cannons the cannons fired immediately killed the enemy general like immediately nice. smacked nice. him and i was just like fuck yeah and so then at that point you're like do i use modern tech like am i allowed to use modern tactics in it <laughs> wait, like, wait, 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 wait what do you mean by modern tactics like, like i don't know like they didn't Social fight media necessarily campaigns. fight wars the way we fight wars today. So I was like, oh, can I like, like think about it in a more of a modern sense? And I know it's not that big a difference. You're, you're, I know, I, I know what you're saying, but it, it's not like I have modern people in it, but I was just like, oh, let me like go through the streets and like block off these specific alleyways and stuff like that. And anyways, I slaughtered the man. Uh, and then, uh. So anyways, it's a bit a bit of Napoleon Total War. I'm done with the 4X side of it. I'm just going to fight historical battles because it's way more fun and uh, it's super duper cool. Um, next up, Steam Next Fest is in full effect right now, folks. Uh, you can go download demos for video games. I have played the demos for Deep Rock Survivor, which is the Vampire Survivor's Deep Rock video game. Uh, you know, great um upgrade of the vampire survivors thing you're running around on basically the same map as like vampire survivors but you were also mining through walls collecting gems and stuff as you level up you're adding to your guns you're buying new guns and then in between outside of levels you are uh like upgrading your weapons permanently and stats and stuff like that and then once there's a timer at the top and as the timer goes you get supply drops there's new swarms and at the end of the timer like line it has the boss so then you run around kill the boss once the boss is dead drop pod comes down you get in the drop pod it goes to the next layer of of the planet and then you do that and i honestly i died on like the third or fourth level so i don't know if it goes forever or eventually it'll just kick you out like you beat the level uh, a la Vampire Survivors when you beat or death comes, whatever. Super fun. Highly recommend it. Uh, check out the demo. It's on Steam Next Fest. Secondly, Foundry, the uh, new uh, 3D Factor. I almost said Fortnite. Factorio. Uh, it, is, it is essentially Factorio plus Minecraft. It is a voxel y world. Um, you are building. It's got this interesting mechanic where you are placing platforms down and putting your devices on top of the platforms and those platforms conduct the power so you're not also setting up Ooh. power lines as long as that platform is connected to a power source it is doing that um it's not quite there on the control side 
I was having a little fiddly bits with it, and I don't know if that just, the tutorial wasn't presenting me with the more um, like complicated maneuvers, like if I hold control or something. But like putting down conveyor belts, I was like switching to other types of conveyor belts, which was kind of annoying. Um, but overall, I liked it. The mining, you set up like your platform next to the ore, ore area, you um, place drones down and they fly over. And then out of uh -huh. each thing, on every side of a device, it has a like a port, and then you attach a a output from that, and it spits it onto the thing, and then you put an input oh, on something this, else. So that's like that's like Dyson Sphere program where buildings have defined input output. Of yeah. So, things. but it's, they're not defined input output. The input output device is its own thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So Sorry. you just put it's, it. It's anywhere. like defined. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like defined junction points, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you can do that like anywhere. Those also have to be on a platform to work. Um, I basically like, I did play it a little bit and then I kind of stopped myself because I said this would be a good stream game when it's eventually out and I'd rather um, wait for that. It It felt very, I fell into the trap where I was like doing everything at the ore site and I was thinking, yeah. when we play it, we got to make sure you do the mining at the ore site and then send stuff uh, away yes. and all that yes. sort of stuff. So build a no, no release date. No release date for this yet. And and I, I deliberately did not play the demo for the exact reason you said, which is I can tell this is going to be good. I'm going to wait for it to come out. Um, I, I need to know the release date, though, because here's the problem. Factorio Space DLC comes out next year. True. I'm, I, I just beat Dyson Sphere program. I, I want to play one of these games right now. So my options are play Factorio again and then play it again next year for the DLC. Uh, I just did Dyson Sphere program. I can't do that again. That's crazy. Uh, I could do Satisfactory, but honestly, I, I think Satisfactory would be better multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And so if this comes out in the next couple months perfect time for it so i'm i'm ready for another factorio game so i'm i'm glad you gave this positive reviews i'm seeing positive yeah. takes for it i'm ex i'm super excited for it yeah it, it definitely needs some time in the oven still uh but like as far as i could tell in the demo i could just like load up a server if i wanted to so it must be fairly close to coming out um there goes my phone uh so that'll be nice um but honestly if you want to play some satisfactory i, play, I still never beat factorio so i could also do that <laughs> it's tempting <laughs> it, I, um, there's just too many fucking games right now so maybe maybe november yeah. december yeah not yeah. not in october <laughs> not in october just load it up uh there's nothing coming out uh and then the final game i played today uh is the robocop rogue city um holy shit this game's fantastic uh, oh, goodness, absolutely yeah. fantastic oh, yeah. you were oh, yeah. just like <laughs> <laughs> with your huge fucking gun <laughs> and people explode when you shoot them <laughs> and it is so good they start off with like the news broadcast uh the same as um from the movie uh it is it is chef's kiss perfect um i went through this whole like opening bit and then uh it's also peter weller is the voice which is great mm -hmm um the lewis your partner is there she's great she looks it looks just like her uh you go back to the precinct the sergeant's there uh you go to your like little caged in area and they like plug you back in and you can tell where they're like i think what they've done is taken the story of robocop and just taken the movie and like made the movie as if it took place over a much longer period of time you seem to be uh like uh, you just started at the precinct as RoboCop uh, because you even like during the mission have a flashback like you hear your wife and kid and stuff because you got like damaged and like the memories are coming through uh, but so far like I didn't see an Ed 209 but I'm so excited it it feels really good It it's funny you're so slow but you just feel awesome you're like just it's so good it's so good. yeah I, i've seen some clips it looks it looks very good yeah um, um are you have you encountered any of the i know there was some like i think it was alex Patalia from uh digital foundry said there was some really bad like screen stuttering that was happening where it was like they weren't sure if it was if it was from the 
it, I believe it was Unreal Engine, but I think they put out a patch that was supposed to okay. address that. Yeah, yeah that was, was that was like a couple days ago, so I wasn't sure if it was still a thing. I was getting some stuttering. I was also recording on OBS while playing it, and I had to turn things down. But like, there were things where my OBS was stuttering, but the game wasn't, mm. or vice versa. So I, I I really can't speak exactly to that because I was doing that. But um, mm. when the game loaded up, it loaded up. For some reason, games tend to default at 4K on this monitor when it's not a 4K monitor. Um, Is it 1440p? Yeah, Isn't it's 4K, 4K wide. That's I it's, I have that same problem, and yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's my. I think we have different monitors, but like, it, yeah, mine's twenty five sixty by fourteen forty. Yeah. When I played Poppy Playtime, it was seven twenty p for no reason. I was like, what? What's going on? Yeah. So I, I don't know why I did that because it was chugging. I was like, what did I do? And then I turned that down. Uh, and then it did, uh, and I won't get into it, but it, it, it plays fantastic. feels like a RoboCop game does not. I was expecting some cheap shitty thing, um, but no, it, it feels really good. And I'm, I'm genuinely excited for it to come out now because I will, I don't know if I'll get it on PC just cause my PC is not strong. I might opt to get it on PS5 or Xbox, but, uh, we'll see, uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that then, is... That's coming out November 2nd, so that is yes. a potential goatee tender. Yeah. Goatee tender, for I'm, sure. I'm downloading the demo right now, because I good. didn't good. have it on my wish list, so now I'm going to play it. <laughs> this is the best part about Steam Next Fest, is all these demos. Uh, I have a couple I more demos, demos downloaded, but I have... I know, they're making a comeback, which is honestly really great. I love... Demos are great. Um, uh, yeah, I have a couple more demos downloaded, but I haven't touched them yet, so uh, I might do that later this week. Uh, and then finally, the game I've been playing the most this week is one Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Uh, this is a game. It's a like. I, you can't talk about that because it's not on the list. Uh, it's you have to put bear. it on the list if you want to talk about it. I wrote oh. it as Saw Bear. Okay. What? What is, are you okay? <laughs> what? What's wrong, Ian? Is this like I I I enjoyed and embraced your turn into anime? Yeah. But there's a point where you can't go you can't go too far. Okay? <laughs> I don't need you turning into a fucking weeaboo. All right? Cuz I don't want to talk about Hatsune Miki on every fucking episode of Local Chat here, okay? <laughs> so what's going on here, Will? Uh this what's game's... going on? You know, I was on my Switch, and I said, I need a Switch game to play, and I went to the Switch store, the eShop, they like to call it there in Japan, and I saw that the first Danganronpa game was on sale for $4, and I said, fine, I'll play it. Every like People were talking about it when we were doing Case Crackers, and I was like, and someone else mentioned it way before, and I was like, okay, it's an investigation game, whatever. Game was wild and fucking crazy um i don't animates weird um also i didn't realize this game is like like m because they're just like dropping f-bombs using things uh alluding to people's undergarments being smelly um and general genuinely horny uh at times but uh it, it is a super fun game it is a visual novel style game you have been uh how I how do I say it? you've been invited to a uh, very prestigious school and it doesn't turn out to be what you think it is uh, and things ensue and there are murders there are investigations there are courtroom sessions you get truth bullets to shoot down and debate other people I finished the first trial uh, and it was it was genuinely pretty good and I, I'm kind of into the story now seeing what's happening I. Um, I will be upfront. I absolutely do not like, and I can't say absolutely. I, I'm not into the anime style. Um, and it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. I just don't like that style. It's in the same way. Yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not for me. Uh, I have nothing against it, but I also have nothing for it. Uh, I will say when the, the, um, rooms and stuff load in, they do like this cool, like flip up flat. Thing that looks really neat uh but outside of that uh the visual style of the game i'm not super into uh but i am really digging the story uh the <laughs> i hope the murders get a little bit harder to parse uh because the very first one i figured out immediately 
and just had to go through the motions the whole time. And I was just like, oh, I wish this kind of had me, but it was also tutorializing you the entire time. So I realized I was kind of stuck with it. Um, but I was just like, I figured out who the killer is like almost immediately. <laughs> and it was just like gotcha. by applying like some puzzle tricks. And I was like, oh, whoops. Uh, but I'm having a really good time with it. Uh, Dan Ganrampa, Trigger Happy Havoc. Um, you know, I also. Why does it sound like. It sounds like a King of, King of the Hill game. It's like, <laughs> Dang and Rampa. Dang and Rampa. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm a VTuber now. Hey, what if. Get excited. Uh, nothing against those games, but what if you just stopped playing those games and played the 999 series instead, which is very similar but fantastic. At least the first two games are. The third one was a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, I think that was the other one that I didn't write down. Have you played Danganronpa? No, no, but I have played the three 999 games. This, I mean, this is I, I, you might like it. Like I genuinely like it's it's a pretty good game like it's fun like i okay. was not expecting okay. what the story setup was so um and it does some cool like it's done a couple things that i didn't see coming so uh i, I have been enjoying it um anyways those are the games i've been playing this week uh kyle can you can ian actually go i have to go put mochi in the bathroom or something because he's freaking out because he's shitting i can't get everywhere. him to stop yeah that's fine no worries he's too. shitting okay. everywhere shitting everywhere <laughs> he keeps <laughs> shitting everywhere <laughs> this holiday season he's, he's shitting, shitting everywhere. everywhere santa claus too <laughs> <laughs> this holidays okay um folks i've been playing a little game oh there's a little shithead <laughs> bye <laughs> uh this tuesday holiday in general season. access <laughs> this tuesday uh. in, in general access for game pass folks forza motorsport came out oh have you have you touched this at all will i have not i forgot it even came out uh you know i subscribed to the theory and i came across this conclusion on my own uh with no sorry what was that i came up, i came up with this theory of mine that i think just gran turismo was better um so uh so so you know yeah so that's a good that's a good segue let's talk about the history of forza and where this game fits in so essentially forza motorsport has emerged like christ from the cave uh forza used to <laughs> forza used to be a very common popular series i wouldn't say every year but probably like every other year and they went all the way up to forza 7 which was a game that we reviewed uh i believe for a previous site and it it was not great it was like a casino game and it crashed and it didn't feel good forza games have always felt a little bit too arcadey the horizon series has been very popular but not because of their driving but because of their open world experience and celebrations etc um so anyways forza motorsport is the first game since seven and seven was if i had to guess man that was probably six or seven years ago that was a while ago um so they took some time they kind of reinvented the series they're bringing it back forza motorsport for the xbox series sx games consoles and it's good and it's bad um let me talk Oof. about the good they they I don't want to say they have fixed the driving, but the driving feels so much better than it did before. So the problem with the driving was that it always felt a little bit too arcadey and the parts where they tried to be a simulator in terms of like, hey, you actually have to break. You actually have to hit this apex. It never felt right. So it felt like it was a combination of this feels too arcadey and then all of a sudden you're off a cliff and you've lost traction and you can't tell why because there wasn't enough feedback to you or enough situational experience for you to for you to understand why you lost traction in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, Forza Motorsport feels really, really good. Um, I would say it. It almost feels as good as Gran Turismo Sport, the only I mean, Gran Turismo. The only hesitation I have is that there is a little bit of a learning curve to how it controls, and it also feels like they are limiting the steering to an extent, 
Like there are times where I'm like, let me just whip it full fucking left at low speed. And it feels like they're like, no, nah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's not like a safety mechanism to prevent me from sliding. It's like a situation where I'm like, let me fucking wing the wheel. And it's like, no, nah, we're just going to slowly turn you. And it's a, a like, gentleman, a gentleman would never. <laughs> a gentleman. Yeah. So, so there are still little moments where you can tell. And this is regardless of this, the settings and difficulty settings, because they do have a whole robust section of like, what line do you want? Do you want traction control on, off, partial, anti-lock brakes, etc.? Outside of that, there are moments where it feels like they are putting a bit too much of a heavy hand on 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 the steering wheel or on the pedal for you, where they're like, we're not going to let you do that. But it still feels very good. And I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I think a big test of it was I was going through the tracks recently and I played Lime Rock Park, which if you're familiar with Lime Rock, it's like a fucking beginners course in i racing like it's all over the place for the for the beginner section which is all about the mazda miata and you you learn that track fucking hands down in i racing and so this is also in forza and so i went into it and i was like i know this track pretty well i know where i have trouble like which turns have problems and i was fucking cooking it around there and it was interesting because like turn one of lime rock is is a straightaway you cross the straight finish line it's a heavy braking section and then it's a slowly tightening right hand so basically you're hitting the brakes but then you have to start turning in the braking zone which if you're familiar with cars at all if you are turning while you are braking it's a fucking nightmare scenario because when you're braking in a straight line, it's like you're braking, you're slowing down. But as soon as you're turning, your traction's limited and then you touch the fucking brakes and your weight's upset and you're slightly sideways and you're like, oh, fuck, this is a really balancing maneuver I have to do. And I was having the exact same problems in turn one lime rock that I have in eye racing, which is like figuring out that trail braking mix, et cetera, into that turn as the radius tightens. And I was like, OK, that's a good sign. That's a good sign that, you know, my behavior is the same and my experience is the same. Kind of two big problems with this game, though. I'll start with the small one. Well, actually, I can't tell which is smaller. So let me start with the one. This is a linear racing game, right? So it's not open world. It's, hey, here's a series. Here's five tracks to do. You go through the series, you get the cup, and that unlocks a new series or maybe two different series, and then you can pick which one you want to do, and that unlocks further series, etc. Every single race, they make you do three practice laps before the race. It's, no matter what? It's, no matter what. From what I can tell in reading reviews and the settings and everything, when you go to do a race, like at Lime Rock, they're like, okay, first up, practice session. And it's like mandatory, required, do three laps. And then like optional is like beat this lap time. And it's it's weird because even fucking iRacing or Assetto Corsa or Project Cars, which are much more serious sim racing games, they don't force you to practice like if you want to, you can skip that shit and get right to the race. But they're like, hey, open practice session, get better. But in Forza, it like it's optional in those games. In this game, they're literally like, nope, can't do the race. You have to do three fucking practice laps. And it's <laughs> wild that they made it mandatory. Like it's it's a great idea. Leave it as an option. Give me extra yeah. XP or whatever for doing it. But don't make me fucking do it before every race in this arcade sim game. It's wild. Well, that's like depending on how long the track is. That's like an extra nine to 12 minutes of not. Yeah racing <laughs> yeah because most of the tracks are a minute to to three minutes a lap time so yeah, it's like yeah. and and you got to do the fucking forza load in load out where it's like okay start to race and it's like sunset car oh <laughs> you're walking out of the pit garage fucking hammer your fist with your bro buddy now get in the car let's go practice and it's like shots. fuck off it's too yeah. realistic the other problem i have with this game is so I got a new soundbar recently. It's it's one of those things where when you touch an established system, things start to go a little bit wonky and you have to start asking yourself, OK, is it I that fucked this up or is it something else that's fucking this up? And the problem is Forza Motorsport does not work properly in or out of HDR. And basically 90 percent of the time when you start the game, it loads up looking like log footage. Like it's fucking uh, blown like it's, out. 
no, Super, like the everything's like dimmed. crushed. Yeah. Yes. It's <laughs> fucked. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck? And, and, and I was like, OK, is it the sound bar? And I was like, OK, I'm going to route the Xbox through the sound bar and go e arc into the TV. Let me see if that does it. And that fixed the audio delay, but it didn't fix the fucking HDR <laughs> problem. And I was like, what? the? And then I finally Googled it. And it's a known fucking bug, like, but it's it's wild because it's it looks bad. But I was also seeing posts of people being like, oh, hey, we have to apologize for our review. We said the game looks way too muted and blown out. Turns out it's an HDR bug, Mm. (laughs) but we didn't know that because it happens every fucking time you launch the game. And then other people were like, "Okay, here's what happens. If the game looks good, but then you open the settings menu, it'll fuck it up. And then you have to exit the game and restart the whole fucking console. And I tried that and it doesn't work all the time. So I've booted this game up 10 times and only one time did it have the correct color and visuals every other time it's looks like log footage it's fucking blown out and all the colors are dim and it's it's wild i don't know how they fucking let that bug get out there the game's been in early access for a week before it got to general subscribers like i did this week and it's just like it's it's wild and it has like texture pop in issues and they were so fucking heavy on like this game's 60 60 fps 4k ray tracing it looks so good and it's like first of all it's a racing game i don't fucking care if it looks good it needs to feel good and second of all how can you tout that shit and delay it and delay it and put it out with all these like texture pop in issues and a fucking h like massive hdr bug that is not a 10 percent of the time it's like 99 percent of the time this happens yeah. it's fucking wild so long story short the most important part of the game, which is does the racing feel good? They actually delivered on it. Outside of that, it's a little iffy. I'm I I'm still kind of playing it, but slowly. I really need them to fix that that HDR color issue. And like it's nice to have a game that when I want to play a racing game, I can hop into it. I just need them to put some fixes and shit on it and maybe make practice optional and then I'll really embrace it. So it's it's like it's better than it was before. But at the same time, you guys let it cook for long. And, but apparently it was not long enough. So mm-hmm. it's OK. Damn, that sucks. I, I feel like <clears throat> it's weird. I feel like if I'm going to put time into a racing game, I'd. I'd still boot up Gran Turismo 7 just because I yeah. want to unlock more cars and stuff in that. And mm. I'm used to that yep. now. And I didn't have any issues with it, so I might as well. Exactly. Yeah, and Forza, they did fix the cars. So basically the problem with previous Forza games was it was all about buying cars. So it was like, here's credits. Now go buy a fucking Lamborghini. And then you would spend those credits to like... You know, if you had enough money, you could buy a car and then immediately go in and buy a shitload of upgrades to give it like 700 more horsepower and stuff. And to an extent, that can sometimes be fun because you've got like a little tiny shitty car with like a thousand HP and you can barely control it. But they've changed it slightly in this, which I think is a better change, which is basically you use money to buy cars, but then you get car experience with that car to unlock upgrades that you can then install so you can't just Mm. buy any car and immediately turn it into something crazy you have to drive it in races and practices and you get experience for hitting turns properly doing proper lap times doing good track segments so it's like no you can't just buy your way into like a fantastic car you need to actually learn it and experience it and earn it in order to upgrade it and i do think Mm. that's that's a much better system that's great um Awesome. Uh, what did LOG stand for? Log footage. Log footage. Oh, I, this that's whole literally time, what it looks like. I was <laughs> waiting for like level of something. Level of like gamership. <laughs> yeah, of I, I didn't know until you until you mentioned log footage. I was like, that's why yeah. it's there. <laughs> I still, yeah. I still didn't put it together because uh, you know what, guys, I'm not smart. Um, yeah. do you want to talk about your other two games on here as well? Honestly, no, they were kind of placeholders if we needed to to burn some time. But I've played a little bit of Dwarf Fortress. I played a little Minecraft. They were kind of just waiting until Tuesday when the Quest and Forza both hit on the same day. Um, and I think not, not not much to add there. Still okay. cool games. Still having fun. Dope. Uh, yes, I posted in the uh, Discord today. Uh, someone posted a tor- tutorial. That tutorial guy blind posted a liquid minecart track. And I was like, man, I should get back in fucking Dwarf Fortress. Man. That's where we're at. Can we, can we, can I give my 60 second on Dwarf Fortress real yeah, quick? Yeah, you can give your 60 second. 
So I did play about six or seven hours more of Dwarf Fortress, and the problem is, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to immediately walk it back, okay? I think I have beaten Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is, my previous fortress was at 200 dwarfs for like 10 years. And I was like, I, d I don't want to say I did everything, but I did all the major stuff. Like I set up all the industries, I dug deep, I did all this stuff. And so I retired that fortress. I did another fortress. It died pretty quickly because I made some mistakes. And then I did another fortress and it's already at like 60 dwarfs. And I'm like, I think I'm just going to keep like, I'm, I know I'm going to do the same things that I did with the 200 dwarf fortress. I think I've hit my limit where I have I have done enough of the main stuff in Dwarf Fortress that now the stuff left for me are like the unique challenge, the liquid mine carts, the crazy stuff like that, you know, and I'm like, I don't feel enough of an encouragement to do that. So in a couple years, when I do feel another itch to come back to Dwarf Fortress, I'll I'll leave that for that stuff. Mm. But I have I feel like I have beaten the main vanilla playthrough of Dwarf Fortress. Is that is that crazy to say? No, I, I like I, I don't <clears throat> I don't. um yeah, I can see where you're coming from, and I understand why you walked it back. But it's the same thing like me and RimWorld. I feel like I never beat RimWorld, yeah. but I've done enough startings of RimWorld where I'm like, I need a little bit more to like get me going. Yeah. It's almost the same thing with Factorio. Like, I've started Factorio 30, or not 30 times, but like 10 or 15 times. And I've done that beginning part so much where it's like, I get bored of that before I get to the new stuff. Um, yeah. So like, I, I can totally see where that where that's coming from. Um. Yeah. Dwarf still a great game, though. Still a great game. Still a great. I'm, I'm just not ready to to take the step into challenges, alternative builds, yeah. crazy fortresses yet. That's all. I'm excited for that. Um. Uh. Adventure mode. Adventure when mode? that comes out, comes out. When that comes out, you Same. know, it's gonna be great. It um, comes out. Another thing we could do, I realized, is we could pass a save back and forth, uh, and ruin each other's lives, <laughs> basically. <laughs> It'd be great. It'd be super fun. I still can't believe we had we had that fortress that became all was it werewolves or were elk? I think it was were elk. Were elk. It be, the fortress became entirely were elks. It, it got down to like eight people, and then we just kept the fortress going. It got up to like thirty people, just were elks. And okay. once a month, it was havoc, but we handled it. <laughs> yeah, they get, they, once a month. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, wild. Game's great. Game's great. Game's great. Uh, speaking of great games, uh, and then the opposite, Cyberpunk 2077, Kyle, tell me all about it. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 might be a great game. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Okay, let me stop you right there. <laughs> we can't make a decision here, but we do need to decide. You know what? I'm going to decide for us. We're subpixel. We can do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. If somebody oh. wanted to, I think Cyberpunk 2077 could qualify for goatee for this year so is that the entire because of the the patch 2.0 are we counting it as the entire game or are we just counting the dlc with the patch updates honestly i think i think the whole game it's like no man's sky you can't differentiate back to the vanilla game anymore yeah so i okay. i think we say it is eligible it's not on the list necessarily but it is eligible if somebody wanted to put it on there yeah. So um, obviously uh, we had this big new 2.0 patch come out and there have been a couple other ancillary patches that have come out since then, um, just stabilizing everything. Um, I have not played enough. I started completely over. I was Corpo my first playthrough and I'm doing Nomad. They, it doesn't make a goddamn bit of doesn't difference matter. what you what yeah. you choose. Um, I just it's literally a difference of 15 minutes in starting area and that's it. Uh, but I will say the experience of playing a game that has vastly minor glitches and and visual inconsistencies and vastly more um effects that i'm able to access now with i i upgraded from a 2070 to a 3070 ti uh i can access ray tracing with minimal hit to my system performance because of dlss um having that really does make a pretty big difference in the enjoyment of like the lushness of the environment that that CD project has done. Um, and uh, it's, it feels more like cinematic, which is something that I'm always a fan of in games that are telling stories from like act one, act two, act three. Um, it looks and plays so much smoother than my first playthrough. So already I'm getting 
I'm getting quest lines that it's like, oh, I wasn't able to ever finish this quest line because it just it didn't it didn't connect like the like A, B to C didn't connect because yeah. something happened between B and C. And uh, it's just more enjoyable. And I'm enjoying the story more. And I the one thing that I liked in my first playthrough was the story. And I think having the sort of cohesion back together and, and just sort of hyped up to a, another level is actually helping me reevaluate what the game is now and and what I think of it now based on what I had evaluated the first time I played it which was it's a it's a good story and a horrible implementation of everything else surrounding the story and um mm -hmm. I'm having the opposite sort of experience now I'm really excited to get to the DLC because one I love Idris Elba who doesn't uh but I've heard from a lot of people that Dogtown, which is the the sort of section of Night City that that story takes place in, is sort of the culmination of everything that cyberpunk, like people thought that cyberpunk was going to be. It's like all in this town. Mm -hmm. What are we laughing at now? No, I, was, I, I don't know. Maybe think Will, of dog you go first. Why are you laughing? Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And I was oh, like, I was wait, thinking, oh. I was like, did they name it after the thing from Kingdom Hearts? And then I realized it was Dog Street in Kingdom Hearts. Sorry. Oh, I was thinking of in in British slang, dogging is having sex in public. So I was like, <laughs> Dogtown is where all the people go to do that. I mean, that's also very very cyberpunk yeah, so true. there's yeah but i um, honestly they don't, Kyle, they don't I, need a separate section for it yeah what you just said yeah. makes me so happy because the like none of the stuff in main cyberpunk ever felt like a cyberpunk city so you yeah. saying this feels like that makes me want to play it yeah and there the one thing i actually really like about it is it feels like there's so many dlcs where it's like oh it's this massive huge expansive thing that you get to explore from what I've heard and from what I've I've seen of people playing it, it's actually quite compact, but it's like densely populated with stuff to do. But it's not uh -huh. the sprawling sort of section that you get to explore for 30 hours. It's like, no, you can beat it like fairly quickly, but there's a lot of stuff packed in there that you can sort of find a lot of hidden things, which is exactly the type of DLC, DLC that I respond best to. So yeah. I'm excited to get to it. Um, I'm enjoying my time with the game, which is something a year ago two years ago three years ago i did not think i would ever say about cyberpunk um and i'm having a good time and i also i have to say the re the redone rpg elements of the game are so much better like it's it's so much more clear what stuff reacts to other stuff and the uh the perk system is redone it's still a little complicated for my liking but I think it flows a lot better than it originally did. And it feels like they were mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to completely overhaul this system because we know there's problems with it. And I think they've done based on what came before, they've done a really good job of, of re implementing stuff that people have been asking for since it came out. So, um, very, very excited to, to finish the main story cool. and start, or I get, I think it's, you have to be level 20 or something like that. I think I'm at level like 10 right now. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bit more to go and then I'll jump in maybe uh, next week or a week from now when I'm back on local chat, I can bring it, bring up how, how good or bad the DLC is. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, we talked about this in discord. I'm, I'm excited to hop back in, but the problem is I have the Xbox version and oh, okay. which is fine. I just, I want to play this on PC, so it's basically 60 bucks for me to get Cyberpunk plus the Phantom Liberty DLC on PC. And I'm like, I don't um, know. can I can I add you to my Steam family and you can just play it off my library? Yeah. Yes and no, because some games aren't Steam family library, but we should try uh, oh, that. Gotcha, gotcha. OK, cool. Actually, I can I can look it up if it's family you guys yeah, yeah, the same yeah. house, sharing. too. So I mean, we're just we're right next door. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're family I, yeah, we're, when yeah. you're here. Your family, your family. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Um, yeah. So check that out. I'll, I'll add you if it's if it's a. It was at Olive, Olive Garden. Garden. Olive Garden. Yeah. But they sold oh. it to Jimmy Fallon when they changed it to Olive Garden. Stupid. Don't put our breadsticks in your butt. Um, and then is, is that the official? It. That's the official line. Yeah. I mean, I can check Dang. check my butt and see if it is. Okay. Great, <laughs> great joke. When's, when's the last time you were at Olive Garden? Um, okay, so next game on my list, uh, Will, you are intimately familiar with this game as oh. I am. Poppy Playtime 2. Um, a much more, I'm going to say it, it's, it's kind of the cyberpunk scenario where I think it's a much more robust implementation of what was originally a good idea that was... Uh, a little short but satisfying and really creepy 
Uh, Poppy Playtime 2 is, I think the the ending was not quite as scary as the first Poppy Playtime's ending, but mm. the overall experience was a lot more uh, evocative of like the 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 feeling that they were going for in the original, which was you're in this abandoned sort of Aperture Laboratories esque play uh, toy facility thing that's been run down and is now haunted by the living uh, toy entities that it has unfortunately experimented on and created. And it's been a really cool experience getting to know the history of that through, although we missed a couple of the VHS tapes that sort of explain the history of this, of the facility and everything, but I really liked it. We beat it in just under two hours or just, just at two hours or something like that. I thought it was well worth, well worth, the money that I paid for the original game and uh, it looked really good. I thought it ran really well. Uh, and I, I had, I had a good time. Will, f- from your viewers perspective, what was, what was your experience? Um, I hated it. It was awful. No, I was, it was genuinely <laughs> fun. Um, the first chapter of Poppy's playtime felt like the low budget, uh, like student horror film that everyone loved. And then the, this felt like the bigger budget uh, follow up that actually paid off um yeah i also like they really embraced the they didn't try to make it realistic like the whole like underbelly of the factory and stuff whatever they just like were like let's design the level and then put this the, is gonna happen yeah, yeah and put the trappings on it and then not make it feel real like make it even more like scp ethereal like you're just trapped underground um that i really enjoyed um Wait, that wait, wait. you're saying the second game takes place in like an scp facility no i'm saying it it, it has the vibes of an scp uh facility okay. where it's just like hallway like back rooms like hallways after hallways gotcha like gotcha. nothing makes yeah. logical sense and i'm glad they went that way with it um uh i i think that was all i was gonna say i didn't find uh mother Mother, what was it? Mother long legs. Mommy, mommy or, long yeah, legs. mommy long legs. Yeah, mommy. I didn't find her <laughs> as scary as Huggy. Um, yeah. maybe that's because she talked and was being reasonable. Uh, oh, it's a different. We. It's a different enemy. Yeah, yeah. Huggy's yeah. in it. Okay. Or Huggies are in it at one point, which was the worst part of the entire <laughs> game. That um, was terrible. Hug. Oh my god. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I just didn't find her as like evil but then the creepy weird spider hand that took her body away after we ground her up was terrible yeah it was um it, there there were definitely really creepy elements and i think they kind of ha- i was thinking about it from like a a story perspective and i think they wanted to have a character that could respond and talk to you and sort of give like she even gives a little bit of like exposition and stuff and the first game is all exposition through um ex- uh, exploration and the vhs tapes which I, I, you know, there were like four or five of them. This game, it's sort of like the characters are more vocal. They're talking to you. They're expounding upon like why they're here a little bit. Um, and I think that just takes away a little bit of the sort of what the hell is this? It, it, there's a yeah. huge monster that's running at me and it's just like smiling and not talking to me, which is just always going to be creepy. But um, she was animated really well, I thought, uh, just yes. like her limbs and stuff like that. Like that was all really impressive. A really fairly small team of people who worked on this. So uh, props to them for for putting out uh, a really solid chapter two and very much looking forward to chapter three, which is something I never thought I would say about a horror game. So uh, I like it. I like the the shorter experiences. I feel like heart like amnesia. um, I played a little bit of that for the uh, first spooky pixel that we did this month and I liked it, but it just felt like I don't want eight to 15 hours of this same experience over and over. Um, And I I really like the bite size stuff a lot more. That's just me personally. I know some people love it, but it just amnesia wasn't quite the one for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also would like uh, to formally apologize for back backseat puzzling in that. Oh no, I, I needed I needed help at some. I, there there was like one thing where I was like, I can't believe I didn't think about that. I'm so glad Will is here. But um, yeah, that was that was fun. Um, it's good. Last last game on my list, really short, uh, just little blurb is Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. Um, I've had this game in my library since 
Elden Ring came out and I just never played it. My friend Al suggested that I try it and I'm about three to four hours in and it's very fun. Uh, it's very difficult, but I'm having a lot of fun because it's a the the mechanics of combat are so different from those of Elden Ring where parrying is sort of like one of your main things that you go to whereas in Elden Ring I was like I would not parry I would just roll out of the way and 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 reset but this is a lot more combat focused and movement driven as far as like your uh ability to chain attacks together and dodge and react to uh like the slightest little visual distinction that a uh an enemy will give you to let you know that he's about to attack or he's about to sweep or something like that. So I'm enjoying that aspect. And I love being in this sort of pseudo Japanese um, monstrous sort of world that that FromSoft has has created. So I'm enjoying my time with it. I'm nowhere near close to completing it, but hopefully I will soon. Um, have either of you played Sekiro at all? No, no, no. I, okay. I own it. I've always wanted to play it. I do have a question for you. Is yeah. Sekiro, are you like have different weapons and swords and stuff like Elden Ring? Or are you basically the same sword? So, so far, um, again, I'm only a couple hours into it. It's just one sword, but you do have sort of some uh, shuriken that you can throw that are actually like pretty effective at like if an enemy is attacking, you can throw a shuriken at them and it'll like stop their attack. Um, and I think there's some there's some magical stuff that you get or have mm. access to at some point. Um, there might be some like little bomb, like smoke bomb stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems sort of set up for, for that kind of, that kind of uh, additional weapon thing. And you can sort of uh, mod your stances. So like you, you gain different stances that are more adept at parrying or more adept at um, sweeping or, or like aerial stuff. So um I don't think they're it doesn't seem like to me they're going to be swapping out swords, mm -hmm. but the stances and sort of the way that you can like, oh, I'm going to be fighting this boss who's adept at this. It means I need this stance and, you know, maybe maybe that'll help. So gotcha. um, it seems pretty I, cool. I, like I only it. ask because sometimes in those games, uh, speaking of like Armored Core and Elden Ring, sometimes I'm like going into the boss fight. I just want to know if the things I have allow me to beat the boss. So when a game yeah. like Sekiro is like, this is the sword you got, and this is the stuff you have, I know I'm equipped to beat the boss with what I have. Where in like Elden Ring and Armored Core, it's like, do I have the right stuff for this boss? I don't. I I don't want to spend the personally. I don't want to spend the time testing out builds to beat a boss. I just want to know, am I ready to beat the boss or am I not ready to beat the boss? So. So, so at least so far, um, it seems like the the sort of progression is tied to the explanation of hey this is a function of the game and we're introducing it to you with this boss right now so okay. um like the first the first major boss is like kind of teaches you about um stances and parrying and stuff like that and and there's like a thing where the boss will like wind up to sweep and if you i think it's if you double tap a you'll like jump and then you kind of like swipe down at him and that's like a function of one of the stances that you have so um, they they do a good job, at least right now, of teaching you how to do that. But I do have a feeling more more aligning with what you were mentioning. Like, I think it's going to present fairly well what you need to beat each boss. And like, if if you walk into a boss just after doing a line of uh, enemies and and going through like a section of the game, and you find, hey, I'm really having trouble with this, switch stances or or switch to something else. Like, if you if you see him doing a specific combat thing, so. We'll see, but I'm having fun with it. So it, it'll be it'll be hopefully a good time uh, with the rest of it. Awesome. I love it. Uh, that is the games we've been playing this week. Uh, you got you boys. We going to hit the news real quick. Ian, you yeah. Got any, yeah. Any little highlights here you want to go through? Yeah. Um, first up, John Riccatello has been ousted from Unity. There's not a whole lot of information here, but basically he is immediately Retiring as president, chief executive officer, chairman, and a member of the company's board of directors, effective immediately. Folks, that's um, it's technically a resignation, but literally <laughs> a firing. Uh, <laughs> God, God bless. However, you know, I don't want to go into the details, but there was actually there was a good, or I believe it was a Reddit post a week or two ago, which said, like, "Hey, Rick Taylor, he's a terrible guy, but we need to be concerned about the people behind him who would then." take over it were he to leave 
and they're pretty awful as well. They've been involved in some like botnet crypto mining schemes in previous Hell companies. Yeah. So look, this is a little bit of justice, but at the same time, this does not mean Unity is turning around. They have a lot more to go, and uh, this is, I don't want to say it's a step in the right direction, but it, it's a little bit of justice, and there's a lot more that needs to happen after all the Unity fiasco. Damn. Hey, wow. um, quick question. Do you guys want to buy a smaller PS5? No. Uh, I don't have one, so I always said I'd be interested in a PS5 Slim, but I'm also kind of waiting for them to announce a PS5 Pro. So yeah. I don't know whether or not I should just wait for that. I well, first of all, don't buy a PS5. It's a complete fucking waste of money. Uh, as, as somebody who turns it on once every three months. Uh, second of all, um, this is not a PS5 Slim that has been announced. This is a PS5. I, 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 what what would your name for this be? If you couldn't call it a PS5 Slim, what would you guys call this? PS5 started going to the gym. <laughs> PS5 diet. PS5 on a PS5 diet, maybe. Diet. I mean, it is it is thirty percent smaller in terms of volume, is is yeah, what the post said. It's um, still it's still very tall, it's still very wide. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, very deep. It still can't. It's it is somehow when you buy this, you cannot stand it upright. You have to buy a separate stand to stand it upright. And if you want to stand it horizontally, it comes with a little <laughs> tiny paperclip looking fucko thing. It's like like that was one of the biggest legitimate complaints of the original one, which is that the stand on the original one's not great, especially horizontal. If you ever touch the console, it comes off the stand and it's horrible to put it back on. And they somehow fucked it up and made it worse. It's wild. Um, the, I, I, the other big piece of news here is that they are going to be releasing a uh an add on disk drive. So if you buy the new digital version, you can then in the future buy a disk drive to attach to it. Um, my understanding, though, if I'm not mistaken, you guys may know better, is that the new disk drive they're selling, I guess, by default, will not work with the current digital edition, right? Because it's a it's an oh. attachment. Yeah, mm. that part, I don't know if like if there's a separate cabling for it to work with the current all digital. But um, yes, it is like you do attach it and replace the plate mm. uh, currently. It is also more yeah. expensive to buy the digital edition and the separate disk drive uh, than it is than to just, buy just buy the normal one. The normal one. I, I believe that's true in the US. I believe in the other countries that had the price increase, it may be slightly cheaper to buy the um, digital plus the drive. It, there, there's, there's some regional math you'd have to do there. And but they yeah, also raise that other price too. Yeah. I, I do like I, I will at least give them credit. I do like the idea of digital edition doesn't lock you down. You can in the future add to it. Um, I'm just so so coming from coming from a company and I've had to do some hardware stuff before we have had new versions of a model. And typically it's because of a chip or chipset from an from a third party manufacturer being phased out. You know, they say, hey, this chipset you use for GPS, et cetera, it's being phased out. We're having a new chipset. And then the manufacturer of the whole device says, oh, shit, we have to do a new revision because we're changing one of the chipsets and it's an opportunity to change some things. I don't think this is enough change to warrant a new model. What do you guys think? Is this worth the effort? Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird that it's just like this. I, I don't know. Like, I would have expected it to be if it was like the the, the slim, I would have expected it to be even slimmer and just the digital slim yep. version. I wouldn't have expected the add on yeah. hard drive, all that sort of stuff. I mean, I know they're getting away with the old version of the PlayStation five for, and this is the new stock of it, but it's just, it's just a weird thing. Like yeah. if they were this, I mean, it's been three years since it came out, which is wild to think about, but if it was <laughs> this, I was about to say, if it was this, this close to changing, Fuck. why didn't, why didn't you just does, wait? But I also realized does it's this been generation years. Does this generation suck? <laughs> It kind of does because I mean, it's a little been three bit. years and there's there's still no reason to, to really upgrade for exclusives. It's just like, do you want a little bit more performance? I, That's it. I, yeah, I, I really don't. And, and not to say we're only denigrating the PS5, but if it wasn't for Game Pass, I don't think there's a reason to own either of the no modern consoles no. 
Like it's it's literally just the performance increase. Otherwise, you could be more than happy with an Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro. Yeah, it's like yeah. I told Carl OP in Discord. I was like, he's like wants to get a PS5 for the new Spider Man. I was like, honestly, upgrade your PC and wait a year. Like, yeah, yeah, it'll be out on PC in a get year. A Steam like, exact same experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I understand you you want to play it, but honestly, it's cheaper in the long run and better in the long run to wait. Yeah, so I don't I don't think this is a bad play for them, but it feels like one of those things where probably because of hardware constraints, they got forced into a new model. I just I don't quite understand why they put this much effort into a new model when they could have just background uptick the model. The exterior is identical. It just has a slightly different chipset. You know, manufacturers do that all the time. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, a slight little tidbit here. Very thin. But uh, there was a large expose on Bob, Bob Iger in Bloomberg, who's the Disney CEO, in and out and in and out. Uh, he's also the guy that killed Twin Peaks. Um, <laughs> he uh, apparently uh, at some point, Disney executives were pressuring him to look into purchasing EA. Uh, what do you guys think about a Disney owned electronic arts? So Disney has been publicly averse to most video game things for years and bob Iger has been one of the proponents of that uh if you read if you follow like any of the um stockholder meetings and stuff like that he's always there's always like someone who asks a question about like why isn't disney getting into a video games for one of its verticals and he's always just been like we are not really interested right now in doing that yeah. and i think now that disney is what did bloomberg call it like a slump or something like that um the, the Disney's not doing too hot. I will say they're doing great when it comes to theme parks, which is sort of their main standby. Um, but Marvel, not what it was. Star Wars, definitely not what it was. Um, and th I think a lot of the goodwill that they had built up over the, the past 20 years is sort of starting to dwindle. And they're looking for other options, or at least were looking for other options. If this something like this does happen, then uh, I don't necessarily know what it means for EA. Like, what what changes about their business structure if if they're suddenly owned by Disney? Other than we can make a bunch of franchised Disney games, I guess. Um, yeah. But I mean, it, it's they have they have such a strong history of being uh, opposed to allowing video games to come from them rather than like, hey, like we have like an offshoot. Like, do you guys remember? Yeah. Um, was it Slipstream? Or, or uh, uh, what was that racing game? A split Yo, Second. You guys yeah, remember Split, split second. second? I love Split Second. And it was a, Dis stuff, it was a right? Disney game. Yeah, it was so much fun. Um, oh. And that, that was like Disney Interactive or something like that. That was like one of the few things that they ever were directly connected to. And I, they just sort of stopped doing that. So, I, I mean, I... I don't know. I feel like there's there's too many big companies buying big companies and it's I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily a great thing, but we'll see I mean, if it, if they can make money off of it, they'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not too crazy about about Disney making video games. And this this doesn't feel like anything genuine. I mean, there's also rumors of them selling ABC, their their television channel. No. So yeah. no, I don't care. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Just just worth worth speculating on, but not sure there's anything there. I, um, I, it'd be cool. It will never happen. But you know how Stephen King does like the one dollar uh, to make the movie stories stuff. Uh, oh, stuff like licensing rights. Oh, okay. um, it'd be cool if like uh, companies like and I'm not saying Disney would do this because they're too money hungry. But if more people did that with IPs to be like, oh, hey you're going to make it like pitch me your video game. If you really think it shapes up with the IP I own, I'll, I'll give it to you the license real cheap. We'll make money. Like, I feel like there's people out there yeah. who can make that happen. And I think part of like you talking about Bob Iger and video games, I think there's still that stigma that video games are for children and you yeah. hit on this a lot, Ian. Um, and I think that still comes through in the business world where it's just like, Oh, we don't need to do video games are for kids. Uh, but when it's like the biggest entertainment industry in the world and makes By far, so yeah. much money. And I wonder if the in sort of implosion of the Marvel and superhero film stuff 
is making and the writer strike and sag strike are making them be like oh maybe we should look towards video games because that could be a money maker um wait they're yeah. unionizing too what uh <laughs> so yeah they're they're a bit desperate so they're looking everywhere um speaking of desperation folks uh activision it's too bad we couldn't have david on the local chat because activision <laughs> had a town hall this week <laughs> hosted by james corden mm. uh In infamous car. late night tv show host <laughs> is james corden uh interviewing bobby kodak they said some things bobby kodak said guitar hero and uh lots of weird stuff going on just uh, right on the on the on the eve of what is rumored to be the closing of the Microsoft Activision acquisition tomorrow, just why would you ever host a company town hall and invite James Corden to do it and have your embattled and bittered CEO there and try and muck <laughs> it up? What the fuck? Right? Am I right here? Yeah, it's, it's weird. Just... Maybe he just really liked James Corden. He's just like, I just want to yeah. hang out with him. You know, I just. He loves Gavin and Stacy. Yeah, big fan. You know, I was a money uh, karaoke man. Is just... <laughs> yeah, I know Brad Pitt. I'm really good friends with Brad Pitt. Yeah, super good fucking friends. wild. Let's end on some good news, folks. Last news story oh. here. Incredible news. That's right. Coming to 4K UHD this January is the Super Mario Brothers 30th anniversary collection with what looks like an absolute fuckload of extras behind the scenes you get a film cell you get a sticker sheet you get so much shit in this that i was looking at this picture in twitter and i was like are they showing multiple different products or is this just one package and folks it's a fucking package i think it includes <laughs> a book too uh yeah a 34 page souvenir magazine a 250 page hardbound book a 200 page uh, soft cover book of scripts including uh, I you know, actually you know what I was looking at this this is a hundred dollars and I thought that was too much but there's there's two books and a fucking 4k edition in here I think I have to pre-order this are, are you guys fans of the Super Mario Brothers 1990s movie I've never seen it yeah I've never seen so it either. that might be something we can I, watch after extra life or something but I, yeah you know maybe maybe we should this won't be out in time but I could try I think last time I tried to find a good copy oh. it's tough to find a good quality copy I, but I'll I, try I have that fan up res that 4k fan yes it's on my Plex server so let's let's yeah. do it I want to watch it I I haven't seen it since like the late 90s when i was like eight or nine or something and i remember it being wild like it's not good but it's so fucking weird and i have been thinking about rewatching it and i i think i may buy this 4k copy Fuck it's yeah. that movie's it's uh, there's something to be said about we can do an adaptation in a very simplistic way or like fuck it let's go real wild and make some crazy bonkers decisions and this movie is that so i, th so I cool think um, here. i'm gonna wait for the criterion collection version and i'll, I'll get that one <laughs> yeah yeah uh, get, wait for the janice sorry. restoration yeah <laughs> yeah that's um, it for news that's it for news thank you ian uh finally wishless spotlight folks speaking of folks folk lands over there on the steam uh folk lands y'all know i love my my little city builders a relaxing settlement builder with simulated citizens, you'll find that great stories can emerge from humble beginnings, harvest raw materials, manage food supplies, and farm to ensure your folks are happy, employed, and safe. This honestly looks like sort of Age of Empires Banished, and I am yeah. all yeah. for it. Um, I love Banished, <laughs> and I love uh, these types of city builder games, uh, cutting down trees, mm -hmm. tile-based. It looks really good uh ian you were gonna say yeah i'm just a little upset it's not about the falklands war but I, i'm okay with this <laughs> dlc 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 yeah. <laughs> folklands well you can make falklands <laughs> in folklands if you can want I, to yeah wishless spotlight great can i tangent to a quick story about the falklands war which is oh, i wish we had time but we simply don't <laughs> it's quick it's quick oh, it's fine. worth it Okay, so there were these British commandos, right? And they like they do an they do a middle of the night landing on this Falklands island and they like set up on this beachhead and they're like, We know there's enemy here. 
We don't fucking know where they are, but we're set up on this beachhead. We have our perimeter set up. And like 3 a.m. in the morning, one of the sentries is like, I spot movement on the ridge. And they like they're like double check and they look at and they do. They see fucking movement on the ridge, like 100, 200 meters opposite of them. And they're like, oh, fuck, we're about to be overrun. And they're just like, light them up. And they, they light up the whole fucking line. They lay the ridge with machine gun fire for like 10, 20 minutes. And then they stop and the movement stops. And they're like, phew. Dawn comes. Hundreds of dead fucking penguins all over the <laughs> land. And they're like, well, it was movement, but it doesn't feel good about it. <laughs> the teach those penguins are just wanting some beachhead. Uh, yeah. Folks! Jesus Christ! Will, Talk about that's that gonna be oh boy. the show! Uh, thank you boys for getting here a little early and recording with me. Uh, we will be back this weekend with some spooky pixel. So get excited for that. I believe uh, we have some itch.io games we're going to play. Something like that. Yep. It should be some yep. super fun times. And then next week, of course, we'll be back possibly with some VR, possibly with some case crackers. Uh, and then, of course, local chat on Thursday. You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring you to the link tree where you can go see all of our cool stuff. I am Will Crosby at Hunt270 on Twitter. That is Kyle Bailey at Kyle the Beard on Twitter. And that is Ian Gibson at Think Gibson on the Twitter. Uh, go give us a follow, a like, and all sorts of cool stuff. I love each and every one of you so much, except for the ones who know I don't. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye!